Uh, where did the hijab originally come from? Very good. What is the term? Um, Sharia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahilladzi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa dinil haq liuzhinahu ala dini kulihi wa kafa billahi syahidah. Ashadu an la ilahi lallahu wahdahu la syarikalah wa ashadu anna muhammad dan abduhu wa rasuluhu la nabiya ba'dah. Berjumpa lagi dengan channel saya Mars Tehno. Saya doakan semoga semua sahabat dalam keadaan sehat selalu. Pada video kali ini kami akan menampilkan bagaimana usaha dakwah seorang dokter Sabel Ahmad. Beliau pada kesempatan ini menerima masyarakat Kristen yang berasal dari kanan ya. Mereka mengunjungi masjid di Amerika Serikat untuk berdiskusi dengan Dr. Sabil Ahmad tentang agama Islam. Nah sahabat mari kita saksikan bersama-sama videonya dan saya hanya sedikit mereaksinya. Sure. Yeah. Um, Hold. Hold. Yeah. Uh, where did the hijab originally come from? Very good. So the question is, the hijab that the women that they wear, what is the history behind it and where did it, uh, it come from, right? I'm really glad you're taking notes, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's a sign of a good student and a good teacher, <laughs> correct? Wonderful. So the question is, where did the concept of hijab came from? Uh, well, the concept of hijab is there in the Quran. There are two passages in the Quran that speaks about the concept of modesty for women. They are in the Quran, chapter 24, verse number 30, and chapter 33, verse number 59. So the concept of hijab is quite neat. You know, anywhere that we go, may that be in schools and colleges, in restaurants, in a church, in a mosque, in a masjid, there is always a dress code, even in the plains, right? You almost always hear about people getting kicked off because they're not abiding by the dress code. So hijab is a dress code that God has given to the Muslim women for the sake of modesty. So it's a commandment coming from the Quran. Second important thing is the concept of modesty in Islam is not only for the women, it is also for the men. So me as a man, I cannot wear a tight clothes, transparent clothes, clothes of the opposite gender, or extravagant close to such an extent that I'm just wasting money. So modesty is for both males and females in Islam. The third important point would be that uh, modesty is not limited only to uh, what we wear. It's a comprehensive uh, concept of modesty in Islam. Modesty of uh, our interaction with people of opposite gender, modesty of uh, our uh, tongue, modesty of the ears, so it's a comprehensive, it's a state of mind. Modesty should be there any place, anywhere, in front of anyone, even at homes. Number fourth important point regarding modesty is this. So where did the concept of modesty comes in? It did not originate with the Quran, even if you look into the older scriptures. So many of you are from the Christian background, maybe Jewish background or so, even from the Hindu background, you can still find the concept of hijab and modesty in the Bible. For example, in the Old Testament, a Jewish lady, after she, uh, after she gets married, she cannot show her hair. Concept of modesty. According to the Christian Bible, in the 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 5 and 6, it speaks about to the Christian ladies, when you're going to the prayer in a church, you're supposed to cover your hair, you cannot show your hair. If you show your hair according to the Bible, it is a form of disrespect and dishonor. It is as if you should shave your hair, which is even bad. That means you should cover your hair. It's a commandment in the Quran. So I would say the concept of hijab is there in the Bible. But the concept of modesty is also there in the secular societies. I mean, a person just cannot walk naked, right? they would be arrested. So the concept is there. So at the end of the day, Islam wants uh, our ladies to be respected as mothers, as equals, right, as humans, not objectified, but respected as equals and as humans, and they should be appreciated for their personality, for their talents and the skills and the faith that Islam has given to them. So taking that modesty and uh, the crown of hijab on their hairs and the whole modesty, Muslim women in the past, they have made humongous achievements. You know, one of the wives of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, she was the best scholar of her time. 
So women have been scholars and they have been in the sports field, you know, in the 2016 Olympics. Uh, there have been literally 20 plus Muslim ladies, many of them wearing the hijab. They wear uh, fencing, right? Marathon, high jump, uh, track and field. It's off. Oh, it's off. It's not you? Okay. <laughs> They're all looking at you. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, it's off. <laughs> it's off. Okay, fine. Uh, so at the end of the day, hijab is a concept of modesty that God has given to humanity. If humanity, if all the humans, if you live by this wonderful, amazing instructions, so the society would be chaste, society would be modest, and society would be prosperous. And that's the concept of hijab in Islam. Good question. Okay, there's a question here. <laughs> what is the term? Um, Sharia. So the question is about Sharia, all right? And she would like to know, okay, what about Sharia, the Sharia law? And I know that many other people, many other guests over here, they may have similar question or concern, or they want to know what is this all about. It is important for us to know just a simple English simplified definition of Sharia is, Sharia is a guidance. It's a guidance from God for humanity, so humanity can live in peace and harmony with other humans. That's a simple definition, I would say, about Sharia. You know, we all have Sharia or we all have guidance in different ways, shapes or forms. When I was driving from Chicago with my friend Akram, it took us about 12 hours coming here. We were following the Sharia of the road. We were following the guidance, the rules of the road. So Sharia basically means the guidance, the instructions God has given. However, those instructions are not the very first time mentioned in the Quran by the Creator. We say there is a concept of Sharia even in the Bible. The Ten Commandments that you have, we would say that was the Sharia guidance God has given to Moses and his people. When it says in the Exodus chapter 20 verse number uh, uh, 3 and onwards, we say that when God speaks in the Old Testament that you should not take any other God besides me, we say that was the Sharia God gave to Moses about monotheism to his people. When the Ten Commandments speaks about do not lie, do not cheat, be good to neighbors, do not murder, we say that was the Sharia God has given to Moses uh, to be shared with his people. Now, one of the aspects of God's guidance is that there should be checks and balances in the society. You know, there is always a consequences, punishment system in any society for the better functioning of a society. For example, in the USA, there is a budget of $800 billion in the USA for the checks and balances. You know, for the police force, for the US Army, for the defense budget, there's a punishment system as part of the Sharia also. But the punishment system of the Sharia cannot be implemented just by any human in the basement of a mosque or somewhere. There has to be a proper Islamic government and that Islamic government now can implement, you know, just like none of you can chase a car which is going, you know, really fast and give that car a ticket, right? You cannot do that. It has to be the, the police that were appointed by, the, by, by Canada and then that person or that police officer can give the ticket. Sharia is not limited to the punishment system, but Sharia also speaks about the guidance in a really holistic way. For example, according to chapter 6 of the Quran, verse number 141, taking care of the environment is also part of the Sharia. According to chapter 49, verse number uh, 13 of the Quran, unity of humanity so we can live in peace and harmony, it is part of the Sharia. Taking away racism from the society and treating all of us as equal, it is part of the Sharia. Helping the neighbors is part of the Sharia. Taking care of the parents is part of the Sharia. So Sharia is a holistic term. At the end of the day, it means these are instructions and guidance God has given to humanity so we can live in peace and harmony, so we can bring justice and peace for all of humanity. So that is the definition of Sharia, examples of Sharia, and the main purpose of Sharia. One important footnote regarding that question and the answer is that 
any person can abuse any concept within the bible old testament new testament within the quran any person any group they can misuse it unfortunately when some people when they misuse the concept of sharia if they are abusing uh, you know women or forcefully converting people taking away some rights of individuals we we uh, we blame that person right but we cannot blame the sharia that god has intended in the same way when any christian or any jew or any person for that matter if a jewish person is taking away some land from palestinians we blame that person but not the old testament if any christian they have done crusades genocide of native americans right the spanish inquisition we blame those christians but we don't blame the bible if any hindu the rss the bjp person if they are doing genocide on the muslims in india we blame those hindus but not their scriptures per se if any buddhist person if they are doing genocide on uh, the muslims in myanmar we blame those people but not their faith in the same way if any person is abusing the word sharia or jihad right or abusing some passages from the quran we blame those individuals but not the perfect faith of islam good question thank you Masya Allah, sebuah sesi tanya jawab yang sangat menarik dari masyarakat Kristen Kanada kepada Dr. Sabil Ahmed. Pertanyaan pertama adalah berasal dari agama manakah hijab atau jilbab itu? Menurut Dr. Sabil Ahmed, saya sangat senang Anda ingin mengetahuinya. Anda mencatat dengan benar, itu pertanda murid yang baik dan juga guru yang baik. Luar biasa. Jadi pertanyaannya adalah, dari manakah konsep hijab itu berasal? Baik, konsep hijab itu ada di kitab suci Al-Qur'an. Ada dua surat di dalam Al-Qur'an yang berbicara tentang konsep kesopanan untuk wanita. Tepatnya ada di Al-Qur'an surat 24 ayat 30 dan 31 serta di dalam surat 33 ayat 59. Jadi konsep hijab cukup rapi. Anda tahu, kemanapun kita pergi. Mungkin ke sekolah, perguruan tinggi, restoran, di gereja, atau di masjid, selalu ada kode perpakaian. Bahkan di pesawat pun ada, iya kan? Anda hampir selalu mendengar tentang orang yang dikeluarkan dari pesawat, karena mereka tidak mematuhi aturan berpakaian. Jadi hijab adalah kode berpakaian yang Allah berikan kepada wanita muslimah demi kesopanan. Jadi, Perintah itu datang dari Al-Quran. Hal penting kedua adalah, konsep kesopanan dalam Islam tidak saja untuk wanita, tetapi untuk laki-laki juga. Saya sebagai laki-laki, tidak bisa memakai pakaian ketat, harus memakai pakaian yang tertutup. Tertutup dari lawan jenis atau tidak boros sedemikian rupa dalam berpakaian, sehingga membuang-buang uang. Jadi, kesopanan itu adalah, untuk laki-laki dan juga untuk wanita di dalam agama Islam. Poin penting ketiga adalah, kesopanan tidak terbatas hanya pada apa yang kita pakai. Ini adalah konsep yang komprehensif tentang kesopanan dalam Islam. Kesopanan kita interaksi dengan orang yang berlawanan jenis, kesopanan lidah, kesopanan di pendengaran. Jadi kesopanan yang komprehensif dengan keadaan pikiran. Kesopanan ini harus ada. Di mana saja, di depan siapapun, bahkan di rumah. Poin penting keempat kesopanan ini datangnya tidak hanya dari Al-Quran saja, bahkan jika Anda melihat ayat yang lebih tua. Seperti contohnya di perjanjian lama, seorang wanita Yahudi setelah dia menikah, maka dia tidak boleh menampakkan rambutnya. Menurut Bibel Kristen, di Korintus pertama pasal 11 ayat 5 dan 6, berbicara tentang wanita Kristen, Ketika Anda akan pergi ke gereja, maka Anda diperintahkan untuk menutup kepala Anda. Nah sahabat, mungkin itu saja sedikit komentar dari saya. Sekian, wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.